podcast dedicated to helping you keep your finger on the pulse of real estate. Is that I'm bringing myself, I'm bringing a great conversation to everybody else at that potluck. Welcome to The Pulse, the podcast dedicated to helping you keep your finger on the pulse of real estate through industry news, interviews with experts, and we're even going to play some fun games. It's going to be a good time. Oh, I'm very excited. This podcast is powered by RSP USA, the data-driven real estate marketing company providing trusted print and digital marketing materials for top producing agents since 1997. If you're as bad at math as I am, that's 25 years that we've been in the business of helping real estate agents. <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about how RSP can help you, just visit rspusa.com. All right, we are here in sunny Florida in RSP HQ. Uh, I've got my buddy Dylan here. My name is Anna. I work in inside sales. So if you're an agent on the west coast of Florida looking to send out some marketing materials, I've got your back. My buddy Dylan here works in the marketing department. Uh, Dylan, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on in marketing right now at RSP? Yeah, definitely. We've got a lot of things in store. Um, you know, I, I don't know how classified this inf- intelligence is, but Ooh, we've got a tea. Oh, Let's yeah. hear it. <laughs> we've got a, a relaunch of our, you know, kind of a sister website, which is powered by RSP called DataCore, uh, which is for commercial real estate. Um, and so that's going to be launching in the following couple months. So we've got a huge campaign going for that. That's going to be really exciting. Um, we currently our focus is residential real estate agents. So if you're a real estate agent in the commercial market that's really looking to get some marketing materials out there and build your base, uh, DataCore is going to be a really powerful tool to help you get your face and name out there. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, we've got a lot of cool things in store for how we're going to promote that. You know, on across social media, the rest of the internet, YouTube, all that. Um, all the places. Yeah, yeah, every <laughs> medium that we can find, we're gonna syndicate that. Um, and then as well, you know, we got a lot of content coming from our great videographer, who's actually True. standing behind the camera right now. Mr. The man behind the camera. Yeah, Mr. Aaron. And he's been pumping out content um, for YouTube, for social media, uh, and so I'm just trying to keep up with, with running ads and promotions, you yeah. know, with all the content. Get everything making. out there that he's been making. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron's keeping me busy. That's what I can say. <laughs> um, but other than that, you know, we got a lot of big things in store and I think, uh, I think be- we've got some good things going on in our postcard department too. Uh, I think we recently launched uh, calendar postcards. So this is going to be a really good tool for you agents that want to keep your face in front of the homeowners year round. You know, I I know I'm certainly more likely to keep a piece of mail if it's actually useful to me. And so these calendars, uh, your homeowner is going to see that and stick it up on their fridge, have a calendar for their 2023 year. And uh, they'll also have your face right in front of them as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the most the most valuable type of postcard you can mail out is something that the uh, homeowner is going to stick on the side of their fridge. Exactly. For the year. Exactly. And so we had previously we've had football schedule postcards, yep. which are great for football fans. Um, and then now with calendar postcards, you know, the real goal is just to get up there and stay within the homeowner's view, you know. And so I think having that type of valuable product is uh, really good, really good for getting touch points on your homeowners. We've also got some beautiful holiday postcards. Our graphic designer, Joanna, here uh, designs all of our images for our postcards. They're really beautiful um, and such a great way to send a message to your homeowners and letting them know that you are thinking about them throughout the holidays and are keeping in touch with them. Um, Work is not the only thing we do here at RSP USA. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. We find some time to have some fun here. (laughs) And we're actually having a special day today. We have our annual Thanksgiving gala potluck. Uh, Everybody's bringing in a dish. The company's providing the turkey. It's going to be a good time. We're going to stuff ourselves. Dylan, what'd you bring? I didn't sign up to bring anything. (laughs) But what I can say is that I'm bringing myself. I'm bringing a great conversation to everybody else at that potluck. So I think it it might be even more valuable. And you know what? What is Thanksgiving dinner without valuable conversation? Nothing. Thanksgiving dinner without conversation is nothing. Yeah. That's the whole point of Thanksgiving. A turkeyless Thanksgiving you can get by. A conversationless Thanksgiving. Not a chance. Dead in the water. Dead in the water. (laughs) Yeah. 
Okay, so we have a guest coming on today. Um, her name is Lynn. She stages houses for a living. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're gonna get some insight from her on the value of staging your home before selling it. Um, and maybe even some tips for real estate agents um, to walk their homeowners through the process of getting their home staged. Um, so it's gonna be a really interesting and valuable conversation, I think. Oh, I love home staging. I mean, the way they can move things around and literally make your living room look bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? And choose the right angles. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, there's an art and a science to it. So I, I definitely there really think is. it's going to be an interesting conversation. And it's all about getting the best image of your home out there so people are interested in coming to look and hopefully buy. Oh, yeah. My last house was like 100 years old. That stager came in. It looked like it was built in 2019. Incredible. It was, Incredible. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm very excited for the uh, upcoming conversation with our guest. It should be good. You wouldn't be my number one company without giving me everything that I need with customer support, diversification, a way to change your flyers. For me, you're wonderful. I like a one person. Now I've been with Joni for years. She knows I'm obnoxious. She knows I'm demanding and we joke about it. So I'm, I'm happy with the way you take care of me. She actually called me on one of my last mailers. She said, you're gonna be so proud of me. I said, why? She said, cause I caught an error that you didn't see. You didn't put a hyphen and she knows I like everything to be right. She said, so I fixed it for you. I said, ah, see now that's gorgeous. My, my person, I didn't even tell her and she caught it in production and, and fixed it. That's pretty gorgeous. I love your product. I like that it has something where people click on it, that every time somebody goes online and looks up the value of their house, I get a notice. And what I do with them is I put them in my database and then they go on a, a plan and they become part of my database and we're gonna hit them maybe once a month, maybe quarterly. Each listing is an opportunity. It's a just listed, it's a pending, and it's a just sold for me. And then if it's going well there, it'll become your 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 bigger marketing pieces that I'll that I'll do quarterly there for a while. It's good about your marketing piece, not just the postcards. People like to know what their neighbors sold for. I, I think they're a beautiful presentation. And as I tell people when I list their home and we do a whole brochure, it's not what it says so much, it's showing that you're a high-end realtor, that you're spending a little money, that you're doing beautiful marketing pieces. You're giving people a little more confidence to call you because, you know, look at the, look at the, you know, at the efforts that you're taking to mail to them such a, a lovely piece. And welcome back to The Pulse. We are here back with our first episode and our first guest. I have Lynn Desiderato here with me. She is a um, home stager and she works with real estate agents. She has a certification in home decorating and staging. Is that correct? Right. Home staging. <laughs> yeah, home staging and interior decorating. Interior decorating. Different from interior design, as I learned earlier today. Um, she has years of experience helping agents and owners get their homes sold, and we're going to learn some tips here today to help you get your homeowner's home sold. Perfect. So I'm excited. Thanks for being here, Lynn. You're welcome. How are you doing today? Good. A little cold in sunny Florida cold. today. I but... know. <laughs> it was chilly this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Feels better, like fall, though. Perfect than timing. Snow. Because as we spoke about earlier, we have our Thanksgiving potluck today, so it's nice to have a little bit of a chill in the air. Um, all right, I want to start at the beginning a little bit um, and find out what got you interested in interior decorating and all of this. Were you interested in it from a young age or is it something you came into like, later? I think probably from a little girl. I used to always rearrange furniture in my house, especially in my bedroom. I had this room with two doors going in and my father would say you could never be blind because every day he'd come home and a bed would be in a different spa. <laughs> or, um, so probably as a little girl, I, it started. And then I just would always help my friends, you know, pick pink colors, move furniture around, go shopping with them. So 
hobby. A hobby hobby turned hobby turned into a second profession. Career. Excellent. That's the best kind of career to have, I feel, because it's something that you're already passionate about and interested in. You enjoy it, I assume? I do. It's not like work. It's fun. Yeah. And it's really great meeting a lot of people, too. So yeah. that's an added perk. Right. That's so cool. Um, Alrighty. So how do you keep your finger on the pulse and stay on top of the latest trends in home staging and interior decorating? Well, I have many magazine subscriptions to just different HGTV, oh, yeah. Southern Living, one. things like that. And I, when I go to a bookstore, I gravitate right towards the interior decorating books. And I have an extensive collection. And believe it or not, HGTV is such a popular TV station this hugely day and age popular. that I, we I always watched it when I was growing up. I loved HGTV, HGTV. Yeah, so you get a lot from that, and you know, following the world of Instagram, you follow mm-hmm. a lot of designers and stagers. And I love to go into furniture stores and shops, so you can get a lot by um, seeing that. And then right True. here in Florida is the um, IDS International Design Source. And there's one in Naples and one in Sarasota. And they have various showrooms and um, they even offer different classes that people can um, sign up for. Classes with interior decorating? Interior decorator, different furniture, galleries, rug galleries, et cetera. Interesting, I didn't know that. I've driven by it, but I didn't know what it was all about. Is there a one trend right now? I don't know anything about interior decorating. Is there a trend right now with home decorating that's really in that you are a fan of or maybe not so much a fan of? I think right now a big trend you see a lot is in kitchens doing a lot of color, bringing in color, contrasting. You're seeing a lot of navy blues and green in cabinetry. Um, islands also that are just not your traditional island, but they're extending and bringing tables, connecting like tables, sitting area oh, to it. Give you a little but, more space. You know, but basically you, people have to feel comfortable with what they like in their style. So right. I tell them, you know, don't always get stuck on, you know, what you think everybody else is doing and do what makes you feel comfortable and makes you feel happy. Yeah, that's so important. Um, in every aspect of life that we're, you know, doing what makes us happy. Um, Why is staging a home a good idea when you're trying to sell? Like, what is the value or the purpose of that? The purpose is people make an impression right away when they walk up to a house, even from the exterior. A lot of times Mm -hmm. you even think of staging more to be inside a house, but you even want, as they're walking up the front door, for it to be welcoming. And... You know, within that first minute or so, people are going to make an impression. And and with staging, you want people to be able to envision themselves being in that Mm -hmm. house. You know, how it would look, making it happy, um, where they could envision their furniture or their things in that home. Some people, when you go into a home, there's a lot of clutter, for a better term. And so you want it less busy and you Mm -hmm. want it more neutral and inviting. So that's where staging can be helpful. If it's a vacant home, people, buyers, have a real difficult time envisioning their furniture in a vacant home. So staging is important that way. Not saying you have to do the whole house if it's vacant, but a kitchen is important, a living room or a great room. People can pretty much envision what a bedroom is like, adding the little fun extras in a bathroom, you know, hand towels, some greeneries, you know, simple but welcoming. Those are some great tips. Um, So I want to talk a little bit about your process and how you think about staging a home when you get started. What's the, where do you start at the beginning? What's the very first thing you do? Generally, the agents will bring me into a house that they want staged and agents are very in tune to everything too Mm -hmm. and they'll say you know they'll give me a tip oh this house has a lot of decluttering to do (laughs) so um i'll go through i'll walk through a house with an agent a lot of times if the owner or one of the owners will be there but 
you know, the, the, some important aspects are really honesty with the customer, um, listen, have good listening skills because some things are sensitive. So you mm -hmm. have to be able to really do active listening to understand what they want and to explain to them the reasons why you need to take down some pictures or, um, you know, fluff up a room, bring in different pillows sure. to make it inviting. You know, some room houses you walk in, they're dark and some of their furniture is dated, but there's ways that you can not make it look so dated by mm -hmm. throwing in pillows or putting on a throw across the couch or changing up a rug or putting an area rug in. So um, those are really beneficial. Those sound like simple, easy things that you can do to update your home a little bit. And by doing those things, you really will get a return on your investment. Generally, your house will sell faster, fewer days on the market uh, for the realtors than if it was an unstaged house. And sometimes you can get even a little higher than the price, um, you know, 1%, 2% more wow. on your asking price. Yeah, so it really ends up being worth it to put in a little bit of extra bit thought of extra. and time and money at the beginning to get the most out of your home investment. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the most important elements of a successful home staging project. Now, we talked about some of the small details like throw pillows and blankets. How important are those details? Do you spend a lot of time with the little details or is it mostly big picture thinking, like furniture? I probably would say a lot of times in a home that's already furnished, it's the small details. That so you're really not going in the and difference. taking everything out and putting new stuff Right. In. Sometimes I may reposition furniture. There are already existing furniture in a house to make it have a better flow for them. Little things like a dining room or a kitchen table, setting it, putting place settings mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. um, pretty napkins, folding napkins and putting them in napkin rings. Some people need help with there's too many pictures on a wall. So taking down pictures or bringing in pictures to replace in a room, um, in a bathroom, adding hand towels. It's mm -hmm. the little details. Throwing on new bedding. Sometimes they have oh, more dark bedding in a room. True. So we That's bring in I wouldn't have new, um, new bedding. In an office, sometimes or we're in a child's bedroom. If there's a desk, stage the desk, you know, put up a, a a little laptop computer, put a couple books, you know, get a little globe to put on, things like that. Because you really, the, the key to staging is you want the buyer to emotionally become emotionally attached to the house. Mm -hmm. right. And so the key is if they can envision themselves in the house, then your success. And then a staged home too, they're more the per, um, potential buyer is more willing to overlook some of the imperfections mm -hmm. than whether it wasn't a, a staged home. People may come in and be very critical. Oh, well, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do this. When you stage it, you can almost sometimes almost hide some of the imperfections mm -hmm. and make it them see that, oh, this house can work. I don't have to move into this house and invest all this money at once. Right. And is that, it sounds like it may not be so much about hiding the imperfections, but um, showing the homeowners that even those, even though those imperfections exist, you can still create a beautiful home by, you know, adding these little touches and putting the furniture in this position or something like that. Right. And another thing too is in so many homes when we sell them, there's a lot of personal items, pictures on walls or pictures in frames. So that's real important to remove the mm. personal items in a house because it's somebody, it's not going to be, if your house was on the market, it's not your house the person's walking in to buy. It's right. their, they're in to buy a house for themselves. Right. And it doesn't have to be overwhelming. I, a suggestion I always give to um families that are selling their house are like, well, how am I going to live in this house? So I always tell them, have a big basket, have a basket in your bathroom that 
when you know, when you're leaving for the day, because in case you're going to have any showings, you just take your, your razors, your, you know, brushes or whatever, put them in the basket and put them in a cabinet. So, because some people are like, well, they get really overwhelmed with the fact, how am I going to live right in my house without disturbing it? That was also it. on my mind. I was wondering that as well. So that's a, that's a fantastic tip. Yeah, it's a good trick, whether you have them in the bathroom, in a bedroom, and you can throw them in, you know, a closet. It makes it easy to, when you have a showing, just put everything in, shove it away, and then when they're done, pull it back out, you're ready to go. And even in Florida, because our outdoor living on Lanai's is so, um, such a big aspect mm-hmm. of where people spend Absolutely. time, that we even stage out there, you know, make it put out that you're for cookout plates or tables or roll beach towels and roll them on a lounge chair and put them across like as it's almost like a pillow or just the little things that are welcoming and people will get ideas too sometimes coming in they're like oh I could do this to a house right yeah I'm really curious um how because with COVID and everything and a lot of showings were started to be virtual and stuff. I'm really curious how that's affected your home staging. Um, Do you stage homes differently for like a virtual tour or have you had any experience with that sort of thing yet? I haven't done any virtual staging personally, but I think during the height of COVID and the current trend in real estate market, homes were just selling themselves. True, so there was Uh, no really a need for staging. People were wanting to get out of, if you were up north, getting out of the cities, out into rural, so that was real inviting. If you lived in a warm weather climate, especially Florida, it really attracted a lot of people Mm -hmm. because they weren't so closed up. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Alrighty. Now, how do you work with clients to create a cohesive look through the home? Do you work with your homeowners really closely um, or is this all pretty much from your own imagination of what you want the home to look like? For the most part, I work not intensely with a homeowner. If a house has a lot of decluttering to do, we'll walk through with the homeowner and give suggestions. One thing I can think of It used to be very trendy on the top of kitchen cabinets to have like artificial plants. Oh yeah, my mom always had those. (laughs) So a lot of customers, especially some of the older customers still have that. So we'll give them ideas. I'll walk around myself and usually I take the realtor as well. Okay. Because they also have had a relationship with the realtor and a lot of times I'm being brought in because the realtor has suggested Uh, that I come in. So we do it together. Gotcha. And we'll give them suggestions on what to do and then give them a few days. The realtor usually gives them a time frame because they know when they want to do photos and get it uplisted. And, um, they can start that way. And then usually the day of staging, they leave and I just go in and do it. Go to town on the Go home. to town. <laughs> and sometimes I've had some realtors that have come and helped and I have others that just give me the key and I'll just go and do it. Do you prefer one or the other? Do you like working on your own or with an agent better? Or both? I, I, I like it both. Yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of times it depends yeah. on your relationship with the agent too. Yeah. Do you generally, have you had generally good experiences working with real estate agents? I have not had any negative with the, with any of the agents that I've worked with. Yeah, that's great. Um, now how about buyers who are in a specific price range? Um, do you adjust, do you work with the homeowners or the buyers, um, to adjust your decorating choices in terms of what price range the home is in so if it's a higher price range do you put in more high-end items or if it's a lower price range do you put in fewer high-end items does that make sense it does make sense basically i stage it to the needs of what the house needs for example i did a partial staging it was a vacant house it was a massive massive home and the realtor and I worked together 
and she specifically just wanted me to highlight certain aspects of the house. She wanted okay. me to highlight the kitchen. It had a beautiful bar area. It had a nice fireplace, and they had left Ooh. a couch there. In the kitchen? Well, it was right off the kitchen. Oh, that sounds beautiful. And so she wanted me to highlight those features. Um, naturally, you're going to you're not going to put some low end items into right. a house that's with a fireplace in the kitchen, <laughs> you know, with a high, you know, high price, but, um, that's how you, all right. And Lynn, I have one last question for you. Sure. What do you think is the most important skill for a home stager to have? Now I have an idea about this. It sounds like being detail oriented is incredibly important for a home stager. In your opinion, is there one skill that you have that's really um, been beneficial to your home staging career? I think just having visions and being able to stage a home to, that fits the house. You you know you it's not your house to stage, so right. you have to be flexible. It may not be a color scheme that you particularly like, but the walls are in that color, so you have to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. I'd say you have to be adaptable when you're a home stager. You have to have good communication skills with both the realtor and with your client. And you have to be a good listener, good active listening. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time you're to welcome. chat with me today, Lynn. Uh, you gave us some great tips. Um, now, do you have a few minutes to stick around for a little game of trivia? Sure. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so I've got three questions for you, real estate adjacent questions. The first one is the most expensive real estate market in the world. Now you have three options. It's a multiple choice question. Which of these three is the most expensive real estate market in the world? A, New York City, B, Hong Kong, or C, Sarasota, Florida? Ooh, good question. I'd say it's between Best Hong guess. Kong and New York City. I'm gonna go with Hong Kong. You would be correct. Good job. <laughs> In Hong Kong, the average home costs 1.25 million. It's incredible. All right, second question. To preserve the natural beauty of the state, these four states have all banned outdoor advertising billboards. So if you're driving through, you won't see a billboard outside. Uh, do you know what four states that might be? Think natural beauty. I'd say somewhere like out like maybe Montana. Good guess. But no. But no. <laughs> there is an M state on the list though. There is an M state. Missouri. <laughs> no. No. Unfortunately. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some states I've driven through. Is it out west? Let's see, there's two states that are on the East Coast, uh, Northeast, and then two states that are not in the contiguous 48. Okay. <laughs> Alaska? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Maine? Yes. Alaska, Maine, and one more? Two more, actually. Two more, four. Alaska, Maine. Did you say they're Hawaii? Yes. And... Gosh, I'm thinking like New England somewhere, maybe. Close. Vermont. Vermont. I was going to say Vermont. Yeah. yeah. So Vermont, Hawaii, Alaska, and Maine all have laws that ban outdoor advertising billboards. So um, they're trying to preserve their natural beauty. I was just thinking I was just in Maine for a wedding. <laughs> That's what made me when you said M. And I'm like, thinking, okay, I drove the highways. And then. Did you see any billboards? No, I didn't. Was it nice? to think of it. Driving through, and did you like notice the difference? I mean, I was just noticing it was fall, so the yeah, foliage was beautiful. beautiful, and you weren't distracted by the billboards. Right. <laughs> All right, Lynn. Last question: the acronym FSBO when pertaining to real estate. Do you know what that stands for? FSBO. FSBO. Buyers. This would be buyers. Close. It means for sale. Oh, by owner. By for owner. sale by owner. You got it. For sale oh. by owner. So if you see a sign with FSBO, <sighs> yes. the owner's selling it. 
Fantastic job, Lynn. You got three out of three. <laughs> <laughs> With a little help from my friend. <laughs> but you know what? That's what we're all about here at RSP. We're all about helping you um, reach your homeowners. And then once you've reached them, we want you to help them get their home set up beautifully so that they can get it sold in record time. Thank you for joining us, Lynn. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Have a good one. You too. All right. Thank you.